ama mawe haya yangeweza kuongea yangekuwa na hadithi ya kutusimulia yangetuambia kuhusu historia ya Tanzania sanaa yake na watu wake mawe haya yalimjua mwalimu Nyerere na watu mashuhuri duniani yaliwajua wasanii muhimu na watu wazuri waliofanya kazi nao mawe haya ni muhimu sana mpaka amepelekwa makumbusho ya taifa kulindwa na kuhifadhiwa yanabubujika na hadithi lakini haya ni mawe tu hayawezi kuongea je yanaweza tusikiliza kwa makini labda tutaweza kusikia yaliyonayo kutuambia Art in Tanzania is not only the Makonde carving. George was showing art is life. It can be picked from stones, it can be picked from concrete, it can be picked from metal, it can all be valuable as long as there's creation in it. How can we think about life without music? Music is our art. How do we live without dance? Our art is a reflection of all the beauty that we see around us and it adds to the beauty that we see. I'm a social worker by profession, but I'm an artist by uh, passion. And when I came to Tanzania in 1972, I traveled all over for three years, and they gave me an opportunity to look at and study the craft, handcraft, and art that was being produced in the country. At that time in Tanzania, Donation building was very important to a lot of young folks like myself. I was always very attracted to Mwani Munyeri and what he was doing to build and develop a nation. In 1972, we had a lot of young people who finished primary seven, and they had no jobs. When I started in and I, I saw all these unemployed young people, and I also saw all these wonderful artists who were also somehow unemployed because they couldn't sell their art. And so the idea was to put the two together for employment. I decided to settle down with the permission of my Canarian community to start an art center. So we started very simple, very small, only nine young people. We were upstairs on a street called Mansfield and above was a three, four room office. But we managed to get the shop down below, a room down below, which became our shop. The hope was to make our own living. And so we had to work hard. And some of us were working late into the hours of the night. We were all young people. And so we were all creating art uh, 24 hours. The selection for artists by Numbia Sena wasn't really carried on. It was who knocked on the door first. George Lilanga, for example, didn't come as an artist to Numbia Sena. He was a night watchman. Patrick came when he was 17 years old. Uh, kwa mbala ya kwanza nilifika Numbia Sena, nilikuwa nikitokea Goethe Institute. Pale ni Goethe Institute nilikuwa nikifanya mazoezi ya ucholaji painting, kulikuwa na dalasa pale. Sasa ni kuwa kwa sabi ni onjia pari Mansfield Street kwa njia ya kupita. Niweza kupita siku ya nikaona kazi za wasani pari na ili nyumba ya sana. Na nipukue ili nivutia, nipuingia ni kuwa nikiangalia, angalia. Asa badaya ya lipita Sister Jean, haka sema ah, kijana uwe, anatizama ana, 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 ana sana nini. Kwa hiyo, mini kambia mini msani. Kwa hiyo yaka point, yaka sema basi unaezeka kama uta, una, una kazi zako unaeza kuleta. It began in 1972. I was, I was working in my studio in Danda. And uh, it was, 
in the news about six o'clock in the evening when it was announced that Mwalimu Nyerere had opened the center of Nyumba Yasana, uh, which had about 16 members. And uh, suddenly I said, oh, that's a place where I will join and work. As we grew, we began to realize that we were affecting the environment of Dar es Salaam through our arts, because it became a center. We were developing the jewelry making department, we were developing the silk screen department, the textile department. It was a very vibrant, creative moment. At that time, all those who were working there felt that the, the new Basana belongs to them, and they belong to new Basana. That was the spirit. So, uh, if someone is working at garment section, the material I'm getting from the batik or tie-dye section, I have to make good dress or good shirt that will be sold, and the man will come and we will get our salaries and we'll be able to run new Basana. Now, Zulu and you talk to Kifanya Kazi, come a family. Tulikuwa tukibadilishana na mawazo ikifika wakati tunakuwa busy sana na kufanya kazi pamoja na wakati wa kupumzika tunaendelea kuzungumza mambo hayo wao ya, ya, ya sanaa na mambo mengine ya kawaida umuhimu wape unatanuka una kimawazo unaweza kujua vitu vingi kwa hiyo na vile vile unakutana na wasanii wengine mawazo yanabadilika ya unaweza kuona kumbe kuna hiki kuna hiki baada ya kutoka hatua moja unajiona ah kumbe kuna mambo mengi mimi kama msanii naweza nikafanya au kama mchoraji a nyumba sana we could see our tomorrows so that is very important if you can see your tomorrow and you knew that to reach that tomorrow you need to Pull, pull up your socks, you need to work hard, you need to dream, you need to be creative. That's what Swan Yambasana offered. By 1979, we were 50 artists and artisans all in one little cramped space. And so that forced us to start thinking we have to get bigger here. And that's when we began to approach prospective donors to see if we could get an art gallery and an art workshop or an art space for creating our art and also having a gallery all in one spot. Mwalimu Nyerere and Mama Maria Nyerere, they really supported the Nyumba Yasana. And this came uh, from their own personal love of art. Ah, Mwalimu Nyerere alikuwa na msaada mkubwa sana Nyumba Yasana. Mwalimu alikuwa kama mshauri mmoja hapo kwa sababu ya arti alikuwa mtu wa karibu sana na Nyumba Sana. He was passionate himself about art and passionate about artists working together and artisans and job creation. So all these were close to his heart. And from the very beginning when we approached him and asked him to be the patron, he agreed. Before Mwalimu died, he made sure uh, that the Nyumba Sana should get it is own premises. And the Malimu worked very hard to give Nyumba Sana a plot whereby we can build a center. And uh, from his blessing, even donors, they assisted. Nyumba Sana was built in the heart of Dar es Salaam. At the center of the city, prime center of the city, you can see the leadership that was there, giving the prime area to a group of disadvantaged youth. You can see the vision of the, the, the leadership there. And the center will help the youth to develop their talents and also preserve the culture. The center also be used to help others who are interested to learn the culture of Tanzania, to learn the art of Tanzania will have that opportunity. We tried to engage everybody because by then we had all kinds of artisans and so we involved everybody who was going to be working there in the choosing of what needs to happen and in the design and in the planning. So everybody was involved. 
Even as the building design was coming about, I could see we needed something at the top, and I felt the best thing we can do is have a bar relief. And then we also should do something inside because we had an interior court. The contractor, Mze Shapria, understood art and was passionate that this should be reflecting what's happening in the building. And so we went outside of the contract a little bit and discussed these things and he really saw that and had the vision to help us create those pieces, very special. And at one point, one day, George says, ah, but we have to have protection. And so that phrase around Nubiasana is made of shatanis and it's to keep out bad spirits. Vivilanga was telling about the life and you know his style is Makonde spirits and the Makonde spirits he made them that he, they, are, they are so happy so it was like he having a party you know dancing. Vilanga himself you could have seen him alive he was a great dancer you know as a Makonde. My blocks inside, I was also showing life in Tanzania, what Tanzanians do. So you can see at the corner we'll see people having some kettle, you know, uh, women uh, weaving some baskets, making pottery, you know, showing our life in Tanzania. The materials that we had at hand were the wax, uh, because we were making batik, so we had plenty of wax, and wax is cheap, it's, uh, and it's easy to carve. So after making those uh, blocks on waxy, then the contractor took them and then he made a mold. He poured a concrete on top. And after the second day, he had a mold. So from this mold, then he, he casted the, the concrete. The same process as uh, casting bronze or anything. That's the technique which was used. And then it had to have some kind of a covering and again, the color was important, so happily we mixed paint with sawdust and sprayed it on the outside, so we had this wonderful texture of mud. We were very happy to be a part of the building of, of Nyumba. We knew that our works, once they installed, they remain there and people they can see it. And so we were very happy. The way it was constructed, it was artistically done. From the main entrance, there was a wooden canopy, which was quite special. I have not seen any other buildings in Tanzania or even other places where I visited to see a structure like that. It will beautify the city. Malim Nyerere provided that facility, knowing that it will also help creating employment, but also generating income that will help those who will be working there, helping the nation. Sometimes I, I fail to find the words enough to describe what Nyumbasana dream was. Lilanga is a product of Nyumbasana. His international fame came from Nyumbasana. If it was brought for Nyumbasana, Rilanga would not be known. From Watchmen, the talent was shown and he became famous. And then we have Augustin Omalaba, the recipient of uh, Zeze Award, that is the highest honor honored to the outstanding artist. Then we have Robin Ontila. Robin Ontila is acclaimed international artist. And many men, I have a list of uh, lot of other artists that are thriving here in, in Dar es Salaam because of Nyumbasana. In the 80s up to the early 90s, Nyumbasana grew beyond the East African region to really become the leading exporter of arts and crafts from Tanzania. But after the death of Malim, it, it all started, the dreams started shattering. 
and definitely when the Ujamaa collapsed and Mwalim collapsed, I knew and we knew we are not safe anymore. Baada ya Mwalim Nyerere kufa, hakuna mtu hata mmoja aliyeweza kuokoa nyumba ya Sanaa. Thamani ya ardhi ilikuwa ushawishi mkubwa mno na jengo lilibomolewa mwaka 2010 kutengeneza nafasi ya maendeleo ya kibiashara. Vipande vya jengo lilobomolewa, mbao za milango na ukuta wa George Lilanga na Robino Ntila vilitolewa kabisa. Baadhi viliuzwa kwa wageni toka nje na vingine vilisaulika katika mafungu. And we are very very sad. I think uh, when nyumba ya sana completely demolished, uh, my colleague Lilanga was already dead. So, he should have been as uh, so sad. Personally, I feel it's a loss for Dar es Salaam that the nyumba sana was demolished. Culture is part of any African person. Therefore, to protect, to promote, and also to, to, to preserve. It, it is a very important thing. And I feel that Malim also in those lines felt that it was very important to have a center like this. Then, in September 2012, work began to reclaim these works of art by world-renowned Tanzanian artists. Eh sisi makumbusho tunajisikia vizuri. Kwa kweli tunajisikia vizuri kwa sababu nyumba ya sanaa ilikuwa ni sehemu moja wapo ya watu walikuwa wanakwenda na wanaipenda. Kwa hiyo kurudisha hii michoro pale makumbusho sisi tunaona kwa tuzi ni faraja kubwa sana. Sio tu kwa ajili ya kuhifadhi but pia eh, lakini pia kwa kujili kuweka ile eh, mvuto katika sanii na kuhifadhi sanaa za Tanzania. Kwa leo tunapakia vifaa vya msanii Lilanga. Tunajisikia furaha sana kuona historia ambazo zilitengenezwa zamani katika nchi yetu. Kwa hiyo tunajisikia furaha sana kuziamisha hizi sanamu kuzipeleka sehemu nyingine ili zikaendelee kutunzwa na, ku, na kuwa historia katika katika nchi yetu. Mwanzoni mwa mwaka 2014 ugunduzi wa kushangaza ulifanyika katika bandari ya Dar es Salaam. It was going to Hamburg, so I was given a task to make sure that this material must be sent to the museum and not given the permit to go to Hamburg. George Lilanga is a famous artist and the materials were sold to somebody with a cheap price. So we were missing the history, history of art in the country. They are 33 in number and they are four bits. This is great. I, I feel from my heart that we are restoring again the house, uh, the, the Nyumba Sana. So although the Nyumba Sana is gone, but I think the art from the Nyumba Sana is still living. It's a great day today. <laughs> The museum 
will work on the acquired Lilanga's work first by conserving them because we need to make sure they are in good condition before we exhibit them. Once we make sure that we have that fund which we, are, we need to conserve these pieces, we will make sure we exhibit them in the permanent exhibition by creating the Langa courtyard, but also using them for education purpose, especially for children who are coming here and even created a new generation of artists out of the Langa labor. And I'm sure the generation to come will also see the good work of this George Langa, but also to see the, the history and the, the name of New Basana. Though it's gone, the Nyumba Sana is gone and George Langa is gone, but at least they will see his work and the memory. There is a writing which Marimu said that in, in this world, any country without it is culture, eh, which is art, etc., it is, it is like a human being with a faceless. It's like the head is like a, an egg. You can't tell who is this person. But any country with its culture and art, you can be recognized. Art in Tanzania is not only the Makonde Kavi. George was showing art is life. It can be picked from stones. It can be picked from concrete. It can be picked from metal. It can all be variable as long as there's creation in it. So that is what the National Museum is will be contributing to the future generation. And I think whoever came up with that dream will go to heaven.